de reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'm happy uh, to rise here today to speak to Bill C-76, the act, an act to amend the Canada Elections Act. And I'm somewhat happily surprised uh, to be able to get this speaking opportunity as we're debating this under time allocation. And, you know, I think the irony, if it wasn't so serious, is a bit delicious, you know, debating a bill that will change the rules around our elections, the foundation of our democracy, uh, under time allocation. It's, you know, after only a couple of hours debate on the uh, committee report, and it's doubly ironic because they used closure to limit debate on second reading debate as well. I remember that back in the spring. And maybe triple irony because in the previous uh, our parliament, the Liberals used one of their opposition days to debate a motion that time allocation must never be used, never be used to cut off debate on any bill that touches on our electoral system. And here they've already done it twice. So, and the history of this bill, as uh, the previous uh, member touched on, goes back to that time, to the Conservative Bill C-23, the so-called Fair Elections Act of 2014. You know, that's, and if there is, ever was an Orwellian name for a bill, that was it. Uh, among other things, uh, that act made it more difficult for many Canadians to vote and ordered Elections Canada not to educate Canadians about the electoral process. And both the Liberals and the NDP ran in the 2015 election on a promise to re repeal Bill C-23 and get rid of the first-past-the-post electoral system once and for all. So what have the Liberals done with regards to the Fair Elections Act? Well, in late 2016, they tabled Bill C-33 and then sat on it for 18 months, did nothing. Then they tabled this bill, uh, this, uh, C-76, which included the measures of Bill C-33 on April 30th of this year. And that's a little late because the Chief Electoral Officer had given the government a deadline of April 30th to pass legislation, uh, any legislation around elections changes, because they had to be ready for the 2019 election. So the government was a bit late with its homework there. So here we are almost two years after the government tabled C-33, their first attempt at electoral reform, two years after they broke their promise that the 2015 election was going to be the last election run under the first past the post system, and five months past the Chief Electoral's off Electoral Officer's deadline for legislation to be passed in time for the 2019 federal election. So what's in this bill? What's this bill that we've been waiting for all these months and years? To be fair to the government, I'll start with some of the good measures that we're happy to see on this side of the aisle. In fact, many of them are changes that the NDP has been calling on the government to do for some time. It limits the writ period of an election to 50 days, uh, thus eliminating the chance for another marathon election like the 70-day campaign that we had in 2015. And that's great news for all Canadians, not just for candidates. And I'd like to thank my NDP colleague, the member for Couch and Malahat Langford, uh, for suggesting this to the government in the form of his private member's bill. And I'm happy to see two parts of this bill that encourage young people to get informed and get involved in the electoral process. And like many MPs, I, spend, I go to a lot of schools to talk about government and the electoral process. During the Thanksgiving break, I spent a whole day at Grand Forks uh, Senior Secondary uh, giving classes on civics. And a couple of classes on biology as well, because that's my... <laughs> I was a biologist in my former life, but that's outside the scope of this topic. Um, the questions I get uh, at school talks are often much more informed than those that I get at open town halls. And unfortunately, the turnout for young voters at elections is usually well below that of older voters. So I'm happy that Bill C-76 allows the registration of future electors between the ages of 14 and 17. This simple act has been shown in other jurisdictions to increase the proportion of people, young people, who vote after they turn 18. Unfortunately, the Liberals voted down an NDP amendment to this bill that asked the government to study the possibility of lowering the voting age to 17. We allow young Canadians to join the military at age 17, but for some reason we don't want them to give, we don't want to give them the right to vote in our elections, to give them a voice for their future in this country. And second, this bill removes the ban on public education programs conducted by the Chief Electoral Officer through Elections Canada. 
why this ban was put in place in the first place in the, in the so-called Fair Elections Act is beyond me, but I welcome the opportunity for Elections Canada to actually inform and educate Canadians about the electoral process. Bill C-76 also brings back the process of vouching to allow electors without proper ID to vote, as well as allowing the use of the voter ID card for the same purpose. And these were, again, disallowed under the Fair Elections Act in an, in an effort that seemed to want to solve a non-existent problem, that of voter fraud, for which there are vanishing few, vanishingly few, if any, examples of, by creating a more, much more serious problem that inhibited Canadians, particularly disadvantaged citizens, from voting at all. We should be encouraging Canadians to vote, and this will be a step in the right direction at last. Unfortunately, the government missed an opportunity to increase uh, gender equity in Canadian elections, to increase the number of women running as candidates. This government talks glowingly about its commitment to gender equality, but does next to nothing in this bill to advance that. Canada is far behind other countries in gender equity in political representation. My former colleague, Kennedy Stewart, now the mayor of Vancouver, I might add, put forward a private member's bill which would have strongly encouraged parties to increase the proportion of female candidates in future elections. But unfortunately, the government voted that bill down and failed to include its provisions in this bill. And there's no ban on foreign third party spending or activity. We've seen evidence how foreign activity has affected ac elections in the United States and the UK, and I think we need to ban that from Canadian elections. We hear almost daily stories of election tampering in those areas and others. Canadians are deeply concerned about privacy issues during election campaigns. Political parties amass huge amounts of personal information on voters, and yet there's nothing in this bill that covers that. Nothing. That The present chief electoral officer, Stéphane Perrault, said in committee, if there is one area in which this bill failed, it is privacy. The parties are not subject to any kind of privacy regime. And the privacy commissioner, Daniel Terrien, said that the bill has nothing of substance in regards to privacy. No one at committee spoke against more stringent privacy requirements. Everyone was concerned that we did not go far enough. Mr. Madam Speaker, I'll close by bringing up the big thing missing from this bill, and that of course, is real electoral reform. The Liberals and the NDP and the Greens all campaigned under a, in a promise in that 2015 would be the last election under first-past-the-post. That represented over 60% of Canadian voters that supported that idea. And for many Canadians, that was the most important promise of the election. Canadians were tired of elections that gave parties with less than 40% of the vote, 100% of the power in a majority government. The Harper government was an example, and the present Liberal government is another. Unfortunately, once the Liberals got that power, they forgot about that promise. So, Madam Speaker, the Liberals say they want to increase the participation in Canadians in the electoral process. They say that Bill C-76 is their answer to this. But the incredible cynicism on their lack of action on real electoral form has already had a negative effect on how Canadians feel about their elected representatives and whether it's even worth voting in the next election. So I'll close by simply saying that I support many of the reforms contained in Bill C-76, but it falls short in so many ways. And like so many bills we see in this place, it's a step in the right direction. It's a tentative step in the right direction. But we need to go farther. Let's get rid of big money in elections. Let's ban foreign interference in elections. Let's protect the privacy of Canadians. And let's get back on track to getting rid of first past the post so that every vote will count. Thank you. Questions and comments?